Don't forget, ko-fi.com slash stop writing alone is a real simple way to show your support for what's going on here week after week. Hi, everyone. This is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast for writers who are looking for their writing community. I know you want to find readers for your work, but I think your first step is to connect with other writers. That's what we're going to do here in the Stop Writing Alone podcast. We'll do writing prompts and other writing group activities, discover online writing communities, learn how to find local writing groups, or how to make your own. Join us as we explore, learn, and write. This week's episode of Stop Writing Alone is sponsored by the Creative Ways podcast. Host and long-term designer Emma Isaac's podcast features inspiring conversations with successful photographers, musicians, fashion designers, and more, who generously share tactical advice to motivate and educate creatives to stay on the path. Find it where you listen to your podcast, and be sure to visit her website for a fun freebie at emmaisaacs.co.uk. And you can find that link in the show notes for today's episode. Hi, everyone. This is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast. This week in my son's first grade class, they are talking all about writing how-to and what they're calling teaching books. And my son wrote the masterpiece of how to make a cheese sandwich. And I think it was Monday that he did his first draft. And Tuesday, he was supposed to add some details. And then on Wednesday, his teacher gave the assignment when they went off to independent study that he read the story aloud to someone in his house. And they have to see if, um, if they can understand the instructions. So I said, let's take it to the kitchen. And he read it aloud, and I tried to make a cheese sandwich, and it was hilarious because, of course, he was missing, like, all the details. And I just had a loaf of bread with a package of cheese on top of it, and I was tempting to eat it, which made him laugh hysterically. I tell you this story because on Tuesday night, I had done exactly the same thing with my Nano uh, Rymo novel in Talking It Out. And I think this this power of talking out our stories is perhaps one that is underutilized uh, for two reasons. One, so many of us, when we're doing this, we are writing alone. And two, a lot of times we are, you know, top secret creatives, as I like to call it. So I, I think I've told you guys before on this podcast that I've always really subscribed to Stephen King's advice in his book on writing about writing the first draft with the door closed. However, as of late, it has served me to open it just a little bit. And one of the first times that this really served me well was back on Labor Day weekend when I participated in the three-day novel writing contest which you know if you didn't hear that it was a novella I didn't go for a full-blown novel in three days but what I did is I, I sat down to write my story and I don't know what the timeline was but let's say it was like every couple of hours I would reach a point where I'd say I'm not really sure exactly what I want to do next and I don't have a lot of time to waste So I would leave the write-in room that we had created in the Happy Campers Club. And I would go out to the living room and tell my husband, you're going to (laughs) listen. And I just read the novel from the beginning to wherever I was at. And then the next time that I did it, I was like, remember where we left off? I'm going to read it again. And he didn't even really have to be listening. But the process helped me so much to... um, get through my story so last night or I should say Tuesday night after um, doing a number of write-ins with the happy campers I was on this kind of like flow with my story and where it was going 
but all of a sudden I felt like I had these these two plots working you know the subplot and you know the main plot and I couldn't see where they were going to meet and I felt like one might be conflicting with the other and I just knew I was going to need to think about this so I, I left the right in I said I got to just think and instead of just sitting in my office alone thinking and writing notes and drafting and everything I went out to the living room again and I said to my husband I need to just like say something <laughs> I need to tell you about my story and I just spoke it out loud and I didn't like bring my my novel out there I didn't bring my laptop it was just from what was in my head and what I had done so far so we're talking about maybe at that point six to seven thousand words of story and as I was talking it through little like like light bulbs just started going off like oh that's where this is gonna fit and this is gonna move and oh my god and I literally just like ran away from him because I had to come back to my office to jot down some notes. And after all of that, I went onto Instagram and did a 15 second reel of saying, talk out your story. And so I'm here tonight to tell you to talk out your story. And it could be to someone in your house, just like I did with my husband, um, who's not really, you know, um, a writer per se but he's he enjoys stories so he can identify different you know beats that should be hit or things like that um, but oftentimes it's it's literally just to hear myself out that I do this or you can do it within writing community as we did in the happy campers um, on Wednesday because what we have designed in the happy campers club for Wednesdays is a brainstorming meeting where as this was our first week in November everybody just came in gave a quick sort of description as quick as possible description of their story and their idea for their story and then um, asked the group any questions that they have for um, moving forward for example in my story I, um, you're gonna crack up. If I realize that you guys don't know this already. I'm writing a YA novel about a, a girl who is a writer, and I promise this is the first time I've ever done this. I know it's very cliche for writers to write about writers. Um, or I should say she's a girl who wants to be a writer. Did I say that? I don't know. Maybe. And, um, she comes upon a magical writing prompt book. And I've had this idea for a little while and it was, you know, tossing and turning about how it would appear and how she would get these prompts. But what I've never really settled on are what are the prompts within. So that was the question that I had to the group. I'm like, give me your, give me your prompts. It could be terrible. It, you know, I might actually prefer them to be sort of terrible and on the nose. And it was a lot of fun to get that from the group. But what was also invaluable was that as I was describing my story, to the group um, was hearing and identifying that I did not really have my elevator pitch as they call it if you're not familiar with the term elevator pitch that's when you describe a story or product or what have you in as concise a way as possible and the term comes from the idea that you should be able to explain it in one elevator ride and um as I explained my whole story, Jackie Dana, who's in the Happy Camper, said, I, I hope you've realized that, like, you, you told us a lot of detail, and at the end, you sort of buried the elevator pitch. If you just started with that, it would be like the hook is right there. And uh, so I was cracking up. I'm like, yeah, I didn't even realize that I did that. So that is another um, great sort of thing that can happen when you talk your story out loud. You can get practice on how to describe your story how to hone in on that elevator pitch these are things that are very important down the road when you're going to be writing your query 
when you are going to be trying to describe your novel to editors or agents or publishers. And there is no reason why you can't start practicing that now. Because the more and more you practice that, the better and better you get at it for this story and stories to come. So that's number two. Number one, you talk your story out just to hear yourself out. Number two, you get a lot of great practice on learning how to describe things concisely. Because when you're saying it out loud, you really don't want to read it word for word. You got to get to the point and you have to get to a place where the people who are listening to you stay engaged. Um, The number three thing is really really quite powerful and I discussed this I think a couple of uh, episodes ago about really knowing what you want to write about and what your story is about and you can do it in the planning stage and say and make a decision like I want to write about uh, depression I want to write about uh, you know a mother-daughter relationship I want to write about I don't know, competition. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, you have a big about. And you can go in saying, this is the thing that I really want to focus on right now. Or what I find happens more often than not is that even if you pick an about and you go into your story, your story is going to determine your about as it is unfolding. It's particularly if you are a pantser or a planter. Uh, if you don't have a very, very solid plot that you are following verbatim and you're writing in more of a discovery mode, I do believe that one of the things that you discover is the big about, the big theme of your story. And what I was, uh, I personally was discovering today is you're talking to more and more writers about their stories one by one is that more often than not, that about was something that was very, very close to the author's heart, whether they realized it or not. So when you are writing your story and you feel a little lost about where it's going, which happens quite frequently in NaNoWriMo, um, if you can really hone in on that bit of your story about what it is that you're really trying to um, address, then I think you can find a path to follow. Lisa, am I saying her name right? Lisa Cron, the author of um, Story Genius, talks about the third rail, this emotional sort of electric powerhouse that runs through the center of your story and that's this right it's this big about whatever your story is about um that's where your story gets served um throughout so if you can tap back into the thing that is as I find it often a topic you are either really deeply connected to I am curious about or a thing that you have dealt with or are still dealing with. Those themes can be hidden within metaphors. They could be hidden within other situations. Take a look at your protagonist. Take a look at the things that keep sort of happening to him there or her. Um, the misbeliefs that they have about um, their life and the people around them. And how does that mirror some misbeliefs you either have now or you had when you were younger and you might be able to find your, your as they call it, third rail to go through the story. And I, and I do find that when you are speaking your story out loud, and again, not reading it from, from what you have typed or, or handwritten, Lots of times the details that you choose when you are telling the story to somebody else are those points that are important. You, you sort of subconsciously select the details that you feel are really going to frame this character. People are going to get to know him or her. And if you look at the patterns that are within those, those things that are happening over and over again, 
you can find a commonality that is going to point to the direction you need to go in in your story. And finally, speaking about the direction that you need to go in your story, one of the things that came up in our meeting and our discussion over and over again today was talking about endings. Uh, One of the members, Sean, asked, like, how serious are you guys about writing your ending or knowing your ending before you get started? And, and, And again, because he's also working through the story genius, and that is one of the activities that uh, she suggests before you even get started that you write out, I don't know if it's the final scene, you write out the ending in a very clear way. And, uh, you know, my response was, yeah, I know what she says, like that you need to write the ending. But for me personally, I, I don't know that I'm able to write a very detailed ending before I even get started with my book. But I do like to have a direction to go in. There is that old quote that writing a novel is like driving in the dark with just headlights on and that you can only see so far ahead of you. And that's definitely very true, especially if you are writing in a discovery method and you're just going forth. However, I don't like to drive around aimlessly, even in that sense. And we have this thing called a GPS. And I like to sort of employ the GPS method of my discovery writing. Yes, I'm going to get in the car. Yes, I'm going to go on this amazing road trip. And I may be in the dark and only have my headlights to guide me. But I want to know, at the very least, if I'm going north or south. I don't want to just start driving and spinning around in circles and not getting anywhere. So when I think about my story I think about where my my protagonist is at the beginning of the story and I think about where she needs to be at the end of the story to have shown some growth and very often it's like the flip side of where she was at the beginning and I I have been noticing with myself that very often I have an idea for an ending sort of emotional pinpoint but I can't decide if I want it to, to conclude in a happy ending or a kind of like bittersweet ending. But it's enough to know that there's this place where my protagonist is going to end up. And depending on how she gets there, it may be happy or it may need to be bittersweet. And that gives me a direction to get in the car and start driving. Pair that with knowing you're about and you have a path that you can sort of cruise down for a binge writing session like NaNoWriMo where you need to show up to the page every single day and pour out at least 1,700 words. If you don't have these types of things figured out, you could end up sitting down in front of your computer and just like thinking, what should I write now? What's going to happen next? Let me plot and plan right now. We don't have time for that in NaNoWriMo, particularly if you are planning on like celebrating holidays or doing other things during the month of November, you really have to negotiate your time appropriately. And for some people, that means a lot of pre-planning and and that was done in October and getting a very specific plot so they could sit down and write, you know, in those scenes that they already plotted out all month. But for me, it's a very sort of bare bones skeleton But it's a skeleton with a solid spine and I I know what part is the top and what part is the bottom and I'm now just filling in all of the stuff, you know, as I show up every single day. So big moral of the story, talk out your story and there's like a bunch of benefits. Number one, you can hear yourself out of any sort of binds that you might be in. Number two, you can find and start to hone your elevator pitch every single time you explain your story to somebody else. Number three, you can find your big about or that third rail that's sort of driving through the midst of your story. And number four, you can start to develop a direction to go in uh, with your story. I think all of those things together are really going to help you continue to Uh, move forward but 
the most important thing that I have to say about this is that in order to do this talking out loud, you got to stop writing alone. You need to find your writer friends and make that happen. So, um, it's a little wonky, but every single Sunday in November, I'm having a midnight write in, uh, on zoom. I'll put the link in the show notes so that you can, uh, get that link to join us because we'll be doing it again this, this Sunday. And all throughout the month, I've been sending emails with, uh, you know, Monday motivations and, um, on Wednesday, we're doing the word count Wednesday on Tuesday, <laughs> every Tuesday, I'm going to be sharing a pre-recorded write-in, which was a minor disaster for me this first Tuesday, but I still got it out there. Um, yeah. So like every day of the week, I have something else coming to anybody that signed up for the email list, uh, just because I'm, I, I want to be there for you. And I want to make sure that you are not feeling alone through this process because this is intense. And this year, I know that NaNoWriMo isn't supporting live events. So we have to make do with what we've got. And to be perfectly honest with you, this year has been a little bit nuts. But one thing that I feel has gone really, really right for me is finding my people in this virtual space, finding writing community right here. And there is no reason why you can't join me on this journey uh, right now. So I hope this was really helpful to you this week. Um, I feel like there was something else that I wanted to mention too about talking at your story, but it is escaping me right now. So let's leave it at that. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me uh, in the Stop Writing Alone Facebook group or uh, at Stop Writing Alone on Instagram. And uh, I hope you have an awesome week. I hope you are getting plenty of writing done. Please remember, if you are not a novel writer, that doesn't mean you can't participate in these NaNoWriMo events. There's a thing called being a NaNoWriMo rebel, which means you can sign up for NaNoWriMo and just do whatever writing you want, um, but just be steeped in all the community. And that, that goes for you know, my email list too. Don't feel like you have to be a novel writer just to sign up for, um, those types of pep talks and everything. You know, I do think, uh, a lot of what I'm sharing could be applicable across all different uh, type of writing. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. On Friday, I will be sharing another writing prompt on the YouTube channel, but I do believe this month because I am writing a novel, I will be sticking to flash fiction for the entire month of November. So if that is your jam, make sure you head on over to Envy Rivera on YouTube and check out this week's writing prompt. Have a great week. Happy writing. Please don't forget if you love and you've been gaining any kind of value from Stop Writing Alone podcast to rate and write a review. Um, and you can always support the podcast and all things Stop Writing Alone at coffee.com that's ko-fi.com slash stop writing alone thanks again for listening i hope you're having a great week i know it's been a rough one um but yeah write your way through it before you go don't forget to subscribe to the stop writing alone podcast wherever you're listening to this episode today then connect with us on Facebook at Stop Writing Alone Facebook page or in the Stop Writing Alone with Nicole Rivera Facebook group. Check Instagram or Twitter where I'm at NV underscore Rivera to find links to our email newsletter. Recording, hosting, editing, producing, it's so much work. Disaster has struck. I finished my coffee. Tell me coffee is coming. ko-fi.com slash stop writing alone.